All right. So yeah, once again, I'm Victor Rortvet, um, along with Patrick Adas and um, Patrick Gallagher. We created our trees, and I want to talk a little bit about it, and also about the sort of concept behind our trees and where, where we think this sort of space can go. So I'm very excited about it. Um, so what I want to talk about, the name here is Spendless Giving with DeFi. And I think um, some people say no loss. That doesn't really work for, for me as much. I think spendless is a better term because no loss seems to imply a negative quality and spendless slightly so too. But this is really a new way of um, interacting with money. And I think that's really the key thing. It's not, it's not sort of doing things normally, but it doesn't have some sort of negative connotation. It really is enabling an entirely new form of uh, financial interaction. But let me describe what I'm talking about. So our tree sits at the intersection between charity and uh, DeFi. And so the charity that we paired with for our trees is Trees for the Future. And what we're doing here is we're using DeFi protocols to take users' die that they have in their wallets and they keep that, but they can invest that, uh, that die into a lending protocol, earn interest on it, and then donate only the interest to a recipient that they choose. And they remain in control of the process the entire time. They can redeem for die whenever they want. And this is enabled by a DeFi protocol called RDI. And RDI is built on top of uh, two other uh, protocols. We have the Money Legos thing very much built into the, the nature of RDI here because it sits on top of DAI, no big surprise, and Compound. And then it adds the step of being able to redirect where the interest is flowing. For those of you that aren't familiar with Compound, it allows you to earn interest on your DAI. It's like a DeFi version of, of savings uh, or interest in your savings account from a bank. Um, but the innovation of our die is that you get to choose where that interest goes. And so the idea there um, was there from the start of our die. We didn't come up with the idea of donating the interest to charity, but what we wanted to do with our trees was make something that was a pretty delightful user interface and that shrunk all the design space um, and all these, you know, unbelievable cosmic powers of DeFi down to a really, really specific use to say to the user, we know you can do all these things with it, but let's just give you one elegant experience uh, to do a single thing with it that has some real world utility. So what the site looks like is um, this, and you have just three options. And what it's doing is deciding how many trees per year you want to plant out of interest. And our partner Trees for the Future is able to donate or plant 10 trees for every dollar or die of interest generated. So what we have here is essentially $1 of interest, $3 of interest, or $10 of interest per year. We'll plant 10, 30, or 100 trees. And then it looks up what the current rate on compound is for interest on die, and it figures out how much die you need to set aside and activate to be able to generate that much interest. So it's looking at that in real time. That's not a promise that you're gonna plant that much because the rates can go up and down uh, throughout the year, but it gets you started. And so once you have decided you wanna do that, it takes you to a Grove page where you can watch the virtual impact of what you're doing in, in real time. You can see the trees growing. We have these goofy uh, digital R trees that are representations of real trees, which are a representation of the, the impact of donating to trees for the future here. So you can see that you planted this many. You can see what the rate that you're planting at is gonna plant over a year with the amount of dye that you've activated. And then you also have the ability to, to add some power-ups here, uh, water, fertilizer, or private sun to boost the impact of how many trees you're planning from interest. And again, this is just interest. This is spendless giving where you always keep the money that you started with, the die that you initially um, allocated, and you can claim that back at any time. And the only effect of that would be that the interest stops flowing to the charity. So to date, now we launched this four months ago in mid-January, and without anybody spending one die cent, 1,600 trees have been planted for free. We've got a, a hundred users of people that have just decided to donate interest um, out of the out of the good of their heart, or they just want to try out something cool on DeFi. Um, we don't have a massive marketing campaign. This is just people that that thought it was cool and wanted to contribute. And there's currently about eight thousand die in there that are currently planting trees. Uh, most users have have engaged in more than one transaction where they mint um, more die or activate more R die to be able to donate more trees and plant more trees. About two and a half per user. Um, and then we also noticed something that's really encouraging here about the long-term um, changes that this can kind of affect, and that's that spendless giving is resilient. Um, so I don't know if anybody's been aware, but I've been told that the DeFi space has gone through a period of some volatility over the last uh, several months, um, Black Thursday being one of the major ones there. 
And so we've had some pretty serious um, changes in the amount of, uh, of, of demand for dye and the interest rates. Um, during these four months, we've seen dye interest rates on compound above 20% and below 1%. Uh, which is a pretty staggering uh, amount of volatility in those interest rates. Yet throughout all that, two thirds of the people that have ever used our trees, even once, are still sending the interest of the amount that they initially contributed to uh, trees for the future. So this is encouraging because it, it what it shows you is that people don't really need that money back right away and they're not feeling any pain from it, but it still is contributing to uh, a really positive uh, cause here in planting real trees. So you can see the chart here of how much dye has been active in, um, in our trees over time. And you can see that it, it's continued to grow for the most part and that in about mid-March, you see a little bit of a drop off and that's Black Thursday, but it didn't, it didn't go to nothing. People, uh, the majority of people still kept it in there. So that's a very encouraging sign that I think kind of, um, you know, is, is one of the theses that we had when we were thinking about what to do with um, our dye programmable interest protocols that, the thought was that people would let it, would set it and forget it. And that way it would sort of continue to generate some impact for, um, for the cause that they're supporting. And that's been borne out so far. The other thing that's really key about this is thinking about it from the perspective of the donor or the user. And that's the programmable interest really kind of hacks the psychology of money. So human beings are not rational uh, computers, right? We don't have this ability to think about what is the most rational thing to do with our money? We have a number of cognitive biases that have been studied and have been um, reinforced that we understand that this affects the way that we behave. And a number of these cognitive biases are very much tied to our behavior around money. And so one of these in particular uh, is called loss aversion. And so what programmable interest does is it kind of gets around loss aversion. Drake doesn't care about it anymore. Loss aversion, to go into a, a little bit of a description here, is the idea that losing money feels more painful than gaining the equivalent amount. Scientists have estimated that it's about twice as painful to lose $20 as it feels good to gain $20. And this is called loss aversion. And anytime you make a purchase, anytime you pay for anything, you have to overcome loss aversion because your balance decrements by the amount that you paid. And it's, it's part of an out-of-pocket trans, uh, transaction that the entire economy appears to be based on. But with programmable interest, Drake is happy because numbers never go down. You keep in your balance whatever you started with, and you're still able to essentially buy things for free. It's a, it's a magical experience for users, or we hope it will be, because you don't have a large experience with depending on interest, and especially on, you don't have the same sort of investment in the future income from interest that you do in the current number that represents your account balance. And so when you don't have to have that number go down, but you can still engage in economic transactions, there's a really magical thing happening. And on the other side of it, it's not magical in the sense of being uh, fictional for the recipients. Here, Trees for the Future is actually getting money that they're able to plant trees with. And so they have a vital new uh, capacity to unlock new streams of revenue and to open up new channels of the digital economy that aren't just based on, hey, it's a new tool. It's based on an entirely different psychological process that uh, lowers the thresholds um, to, or the obstacles to people wanting to engage in economic transactions. So I think DeFi, um, and there's a lot of other folks on this call, Julian's uh, talk was particularly uh, inspirational on this too, is really trying to find all these like nooks and crannies of ways that we're stopped from doing the things that we should be able to do with money. And DeFi is unlocking those capabilities and giving them to whoever wants to deploy them. And as much as I love Unlock, and I think it's wonderful, I think we're really at the very, 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 very uh, top of this process. We have not scratched the surface of the types of things you can do when you've changed the psychological calculus to economic transactions like DeFi is able to. Um, and so in some ways, programmable interest is revolutionary um, when we really think about the consequences of this over, over a wider span because we love our trees and we think it's a really vital thing, but this is not limited to spendless giving. This is not limited to planting trees. Um, this is about changing uh, an economic pattern. And to sort of describe a little bit more about what I mean, I kind of want to talk about what the world that we currently inhabit um, is like. And, and it's this thing that we take for granted. And so there's a cartoon here. This is based on David Foster Wallace's speech, This is Water, from a, a speech he gave in 2005. 
um, and I'll explain it in a second, but there's a cartoon here about an older fish swimming by a pair of younger fish says, hey, how's the water? Uh, hey, morning boys, how's the water? And the fish take a second, they look at each other and they say, what the hell is water? And by that, they mean they have no idea what it is that is so ubiquitous and that they've taken for granted their entire lives that they don't see it as a distinct um, substance that has any alternative. And I think what I wanna say, the analogy is here, is the water in our world is an out of pocket economy. That anytime you pay for something, your financial power decrements to the exact amount that you pay for something out of pocket. And that there's no way to avoid all the cognitive biases that come with that, um, but that that's the world that we inhabit. And if you think about credit and debt products, they're almost entirely just based around the idea of um, time traveling, paying out of pocket or something, either making it happen now or in the future. And so the different world that I want to think about is what a spendless economy looks like. If you've got money that's doing work for you, and it's not just doing work in the traditional financial sense of, oh, it's earning interest, and then I can redeem that interest and then go you know, buy a Winnebago um, with it, but you can actually, like in real time, redirect the streams of interest that you could be earning on something. And this really changes the equation about the value of savings. Because I think there's a small percentage of humanity that are essentially Spocks, that can understand that saving is good because there's this person that is them in 20 years that's going to want that money more than they do right now. And they're able to defer, defer gratification and sort of move all of their thinking into this future version of themselves. And these people are going to be fine financially. Then there's also a number of people who are very spendthrift and always live for today. But what I think the, the really exciting opportunity is here is a spendless economy where you're able to use your savings to do things in the here and now, to buy things in the here and now that give you immediate gratification encourages you to build up your savings. The more of a pot of dye you got that's in um, compound or in uh, an RDI protocol that's doing things that you want to do um, is, is immediately rewarding. You're not saying I'm paying somebody in 20 years for this. You're getting something for it in a way that I think has a lot more resonance with normal people. And so there's a lot to be explored here and a lot we can do with uh, exploring the power of money um, put to use and, and redirecting the programmable interest um, because I just to sort of recap this a little bit at the top here we've got this small brain which is doing things the old way I'm gonna give a hundred dollars to a charity that I support and then that's the end of it game over and I'm down a hundred dollars the second phase oops next we've got you know our trees donating the programmable interest which is where we're at today. The next phase after that, we'll need some fixed interest products um, to be able to do this, but that's coming. They're building them on DeFi right now, is paying for something like Netflix with interest. You could decide, I can buy a fixed interest product and I'm gonna take a certain stack of money that pays for my Netflix sustainably, and I'm just gonna designate it as my Netflix fund. And it's gonna throw off interest and it's gonna pay Netflix. And then that's done. And then you build up another pot that pays for your cell phone bill. And you can start to do this in a kind of a rolling way and then you can reach an interest only financial independence. And this is different from the typical definition of financial independence, which is like an estimate usually based on 25 times your annual expenses, right? And this makes all these assumptions about, um, you know, how much you're gonna need to draw down and the, the power of interest and everything like that. And uh, what's different here is interest only financial independence is the moment where you've got every single one of your expenses, your housing, your food, your transportation, your utilities, are all being paid for out of interest from big pots of savings that you've got. And that's an incredibly powerful thing because these pots of savings are not locked up. If you have an emergency or some other priority that comes up, you can pull it out and you can spend it or you can redirect it to something else. But it really encourages saving in a way that I think we're only starting to think about the, the consequences of. And so I'm really excited about what's gonna come out of the DeFi space, what's gonna come out of the programmable interest space, but we really do have a pretty uh, exciting opportunity to, to sort of build an entirely new type of economy that changes the calculus of financial transactions in a way that uh, I think is rewarding to users, to content providers, um, and that can really be uh, one of the sort of exciting use cases for, for the Ethereum blockchain and DeFi in general. So uh, what the team that built our trees uh, is working on now is something to sort of help bring this about. We're working on a platform that is kind of a, um, and in a uh, sort of sequel slash uh, the next phase of what we can do that, from what we learned 
from our trees, and it's called Spendless. And so if you're interested, uh, we're going to launch sometime this spring. Um, you can go to spendless.io and sign up for our newsletter to, to keep updated about what we're doing. But we're going to be really excited about what we're going to be launching to, to sort of take this to the next level. So uh, thanks again to Ethereal. Thanks to all the other uh, presenters. And uh, it's been a really cool, exciting opportunity to share with you this vision of spendless giving and, and spendless economy. Um, so thanks again. And uh, everybody have a great summit. Very cool, Victor. That's exciting. Thanks for announcing that too. I didn't know about that. Uh,